Hi, it's great to see you again. Close your eyes for a moment and just observe what you hear. How about this sound? Or this one. Each sound gave you a clue as to what was going on. You also felt an emotion associated with that sound, maybe relaxing or scary or joyful. Grab your bags and your National Parks Pass because we are going for a ride. Off to explore the sounds in the wonderlands of the United States. These states have breathtaking national parks managed by the U.S. National Park Service. Our first stop, Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming. Experienced and appreciated by millions of people each year. The Yellowstone National Park Protection Act, signed in 1872 by U.S. President Ulysses S. Grant, established this as the world's first national park. Bigger than a football field, this extremely hot Grand Prismatic Spring is the largest spring in the U.S. and the third largest in the world. Old Faithful, one of 500 geysers, is named for erupting every 44 minutes to two hours. Here in nature, there are intrinsic sounds, natural sounds of Yellowstone, sounds of bears, wolves, elk, antelope, birds, and insects. Also in nature are extrinsic sounds, not part of the park. Car motors, voices of people, radios, motorcycles, and jets overhead. Birds really have to listen to each other. They sing for mates, establish safe territories, and are warned of predators so they can protect their young. Bats can identify an insect by the sound of its footsteps. If extrinsic sounds are too loud, frogs have to call for mates with higher voices, which females reject because they sound weak, so the frogs can't always mate. So, number one, Sound sets the background, giving us important clues as to what is happening. And number two, as nature is showing us, sound volume needs to be appropriate and balanced. Sound is a pressure wave caused when something vibrates it. Sound above our white sound line is louder. Below the white line is softer. Sound can be measured by a physical property called amplitude. Amps measure how loud or strong the sound is. Or how soft, how weak the sound is. The wavelength measures how long the sound wave is. You can adjust the volume on your car radio, TV, computer, phone, or other devices. If the singer has the lead, the mic should be louder. If the guitar has a solo, then it's his turn to be louder. In music, the term for volume, or how soft or loud our music is, is called... The first keyboards were tabletop clavinovas. They were only able to play very soft to soft. Then came harpsichords with a volume of only soft to medium. Composers would just stack on more notes, more voices to each beat to make it seem louder. But Beethoven was having difficulty hearing, so he was requesting instruments that played louder. Around the year 1700, Mr. Cristofori, an Italian harpsichord builder in Venice, Italy, invented this new pianoforte, which could play piano, soft, and forte, loud, 
Today we call this instrument a piano for short. Italian is the universal language of music. Let's brush up on your Italian music vocabulary. Shown below our sound line, piano, with its symbol in italic P, actually means soft in Italian. Say, piano. Above our sound line is forte. It looks like fort, but we say forte, meaning strong, loud. Its symbol is an italic F. Say, forte. Back under our sound line, issimo in Italian means very, so two P's stand for pianissimo, very soft, as if you are almost whispering. Say, pianissimo. Isissimo in Italian means very, very, so three italic P's stand for pianissimo. It means very, very soft, like whispering. Say, pianissimo. Mezzo in Italian means moderately. The M is for mezzo and the P for piano for a moderately soft speaking voice. Say mezzo piano. You remember the italic F for forte, a loud speaking voice. Well, you guessed it. The M is for mezzo and the F for forte for a moderately loud speaking voice. Say mezzo forte. Of course, you remember the SMOs, double loud, two italic Fs for very loud. Say fortissimo. Oh boy, three italic Fs for fortissimo, very, very loud. It's super, super strong. Say fortissimo when you're outside. So there you have it, from very, very soft to very, very loud, the dynamic terms in Italian, their symbols, and their dynamic effect. What would happen if you were reading in a dull, monotonous voice? Once upon a time, there were three bears, the papa bear, the mama bear, and the baby bear. But add some gradual dynamic changes. There were three bears, the papa bear, the mama bear, and the wee little baby bear. And now you have yourself a party. Everyone wants to listen. In music, there are signs for gradual connecting changes in dynamic levels, bridging one dynamic level to the next. Grab your bags. Our next stop is Colorado to a National Register of Historic Places. The Royal Gorge Bridge in Cannon City, Colorado. The highest suspension bridge in America above the wild Arkansas River. For a boost of adrenaline, there's also a gondola ride across and a highly rated zip line. The suspension bridge is 18 feet wide, primarily for pedestrians to walk across. In music, we bridge our dynamics with these advanced notations showing gradual changes. This is a crescendo mark, meaning to get gradually louder, like a soft closed mouth as it opens up, it gets louder and louder. This is a decrescendo mark, meaning to get gradually softer, like a loud open mouth to a closed softer mouth. The signs look like hairpins. You may only see their abbreviations, crash for crescendo or decrash for decrescendo. Decrescendo is sometimes called diminuendo, diminishing or disappearing. It is usually written for longer passages with the abbreviation dim. A quick sudden change in dynamics with extra loud force is called sforzando. Composers indicate the dynamics by placing its symbol on the music. Instrumentalists are always aware of their own dynamic levels for proper balance. Dynamic symbols are written under their staff. Keyboard players read their dynamic marks in the middle of the grand staff.
Do you know the Italian names of these dynamic symbols? Here we go. This symbol. Piano. Piano means soft. This symbol. Forte. Forte means loud. Isimo means very. This symbol. Pianissimo. Pianissimo means very soft. This symbol. Pianissimo. Pianissimo means very, very soft. Mezzo means moderately. This symbol. Mezzo piano. Mezzo piano means moderately soft. This symbol. Mezzo forte. Mezzo forte means moderately loud. This symbol. Fortissimo. Fortissimo means very loud. This symbol. Fortissimo. Fortissimo means very, very loud. This symbol. Crescendo. This symbol. Decrescendo. Decrescendo is sometimes known as diminuendo. So dynamics in music tells us how to play slow or fast or soft or loud. Soft or loud and congratulations. Next, a national park in Arizona known for its beauty high, low, and in between. The Grand Canyon National Park, where the mighty Colorado River carved out a spectacular canyon and the lows are inspiringly peaceful. And the highs are breathtakingly beautiful. In 1916, a black and white silent movie was described by the piano player from the side of the stage. Now, awards are given for sound design, editing, effects, and original score. This score describes a memorable and gnawing or chewing of two notes, which set our clue as to what was going on. Music moves us emotionally the way that visuals alone can't, because music is the language of emotion, which represents feelings. Your music is your expression of feelings, telling a powerful story. You are a sound artist. Your waveforms of sound are the soundscape. Your dynamic sound makes a difference. See you next time.